Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 18 of my C Sharp video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to focus on serialization. Now, serialization is going to allow you to store the state of an object in a file stream or pass it to a remote network or save it as an XML file and a whole bunch of other really cool things. So we're going to talk about serialization, serialized, deserialized, binary formatter, XML serializer, and a whole bunch of other different things if my tongue doesn't get tired with all these crazy words like always all of the code is available in the description underneath this video along with the transcript of the video and I have a lot to do so let's get into it okay so here we are once again in Visual Studio and I went ahead and I created an animal object actually I didn't create it I'm using exactly the same thing that I used in a previous part of the tutorial so you can either pause your screen and type all this in or get the code that's in the description, you know, in uh, the description. That's what I said. Okay, so this is all the stuff that we created in our animal object. And what we're going to do here is use serialization to store this information in a file and in XML files and a whole bunch of stuff. Now to use serialization, you're going to have to come up here and go using system and runtime and serialization is it gonna yeah put it in there for me so i didn't have to spell that which is always a good thing and then we're gonna go system once again and runtime again serialization come on spell that for me there you go and formatters and binary Okay, so that's going to be used for serialization. And why don't I just call it the big S word, huh? <laughs> okay, right, so what we're gonna do here is if you wanna define that you want to serialize this class, what you need to do is come in here and go serializable, exactly like that, and there you are. Another thing you're gonna have to do here is implement the serializable class or interface so serializable and there that guy is and it's going to give you an error and it's going to tell you you need to implement some methods so let's just go show potential fixes and say implement interface to save some time and it interface or it went and created it down here and this is going to be the serialization function which is going to store object data in a file and just a little bit about these guys serialization info is going to hold key value pairs for the data in your object and a streaming context we're not going to use right now but basically it's used to hold additional information so we can just get rid of this guy right here and let's go and create everything we need now basically what we need to do is assign key value uh, pairs for all the data so we're just going to come in and go info and add value and I'm going to put in name because our animals all have names and weights and heights and animal IDs. Okay, so that's the information that is inside of all of these guys. So I'm going to follow that up with the data that is going to be assigned or the value that's going to be assigned to this key. So we can go info add value once again. And here we're going to put in the weights and there is that and then we're also want to just copy this we don't need to put animal id in there you can if you want but let's just keep that like that and keep that like that okay so all it's doing is assigning a value that you have for your object inside of this key we're assigning the key to the data right so that's what that guy's doing well, then after you have the ability to serialize your data, what you need to also be able to do is to deserialize it or remove the object data from a file. And how we do that is we go public and animal, and then you're going to put serialization info and context in there. So let's just copy this and throw that inside of there. Big one right there. And then we need to get the values from info and assign them to our properties. And to do that, you just go name, and then you're going to say what type of data this is. The name is a string, and then you go info and get value, and you go and reference the key, and then you're going to say the type of data you're going to be working with, which is a string. Okay, so pretty simple stuff. And let's go and copy this and do this for the height and the weight as well. Like I said, you could do it for the animal ID, but I'm not going to do it for this. So let's go like this. And our weights are going to be doubles. 
and weight is the key and this is a double so we'll change that to double as well and then we will also have our height and that's a double also and then we are going to reference height and then we will reference double okay so that's going to allow us to save those objects in files as well as retrieve those file or those uh, data for those different objects from files so got that all saved up and now we're going to jump over into the program file and get this stuff working all right so we're going to have to import a couple of modules here for writing to a file we are going to need system IO and I covered that in the last part of the tutorial if you want to be able to serialize our object into binary formats we're gonna have binary format and I'm also going to do XML format and then I'll show you how to go back and forth so serialization like that and formatters like that and then binary okay so we got that whoops hit something crazy in my opened up the command window there all right and also to serialize into XML you're going to need using and system and XML and serialization. And there that is. All right, so we're going to be using all of those guys. So now we'll come down inside of our class and specifically into main. And the very first thing we're going to do is create an animal object. And I'm going to call him Bowser. And you just go new animal. I'm sure this is old hat for you guys and there is bowser and i don't know for height and weight i'm just going to put 45 and 25 inside of here just to do something and then if i want to serialize the object data to a file i'm going to go a stream and oh, i've already covered streams and we'll go file dot open and i'm going to say what i want to open and i'm going to call this animal data and this is going to be a dat file and then I just have to define how I, you know, want to work with it. And I'm going to say, if it doesn't exist, then I want you to create it for me. And there we are. So I got that data file that's going to, uh, we're going to store our object data in. And I want to store this in binary, binary format. So I'm going to call binary formatter, just call this BF and new binary formatter. And that's all you need to do for that guy. And then I just need to send the object data to my file. So binary formatter and serialize. And then I'm going to say stream and Bowser. So that is all it's going to take. So that data is now going to be saved. And to prove that it's been saved, I'm going to come in here and delete the data that was stored with our Bowser object that we have. And then I'm going to go in and read the object data from the file. So I'm going to go stream once again is equal to file open and specifically what I'm going to be pulling data out of is where I stored it which is in the anima animal data file and this is going to use file mode open this time and then I'm going to go binary formatter is equal to new binary formatter and there it is and then let's roll this up here a little bit I'm going to go to get the data. I just go Bowser is equal to, and I know this is going to be an animal object. So I'll go animal. I have to cast it to an animal, binary formatter, and deserialize. And that's, and then pass in the stream for it. Okay, so that's all I need to do. And then of course, you want to close your stream. And if we want to prove that it is still there or we got all that data, remember we deleted it right here. So to prove that we were able to get it back out of there, we're just going to go Bowser and to string, save it. And I don't think I have any errors. Let's run it. Uh oh, what I do? Oh, I see what I did. Whenever I was creating this, well, you see right here, I went and I opened a stream to this. Well, it gave me an error because I forgot to close it. So there you go. That's the importance of always closing them. So that closes the stream. And if I save that, now I bet you it'll run. And let's run it. And you can see it didn't work. Or it did work. Bowser weighs 45 pounds and is 25 inches tall. Okay, so pretty cool. We were able to save all of that information. So now what I want to do is, let's come down here. And I want to show you how we can save or serialize this information 
using XML, which is very useful. But before I do that, I'm going to change Bowser a little bit. I'm gonna change his weight just so we can see that we changed, you know, something here with our output. Now, an XML serializer is gonna write our object data as XML. I'm sure you're very well aware of XML. So we're going to go XML serializer, and I am just going to call this serializer equal to new XML serializer. And then I have to define what type of data I'm working with. So I'm going to say type of animal. And I'm gonna show you how to save lists of objects as well, if that was coming into your mind. I'm gonna go using, and I'm gonna use the text writer this time. Let's just call that TW equal to new stream writer. We're going to be writing data, like I said previously, to a file as XML, and we're specifically gonna be writing these objects. So where I want to store that information, of course you're gonna to have to have this uh, directory created. So you're gonna need a dark bands director. You're going to need to change it to something you can use. C sharp, and anytime you're working with files, remember you may need to come in here and start the Visual Studio like this. So we go right click and more, and run as administrator if you get any type of permission problems. So that's just something else to remember. And I'm gonna store this in bowser.xml. And then I'll show you how to also convert back and forth. Whoops, don't wanna do that, because I need to serialize this. And to do that, you go serializer like that, and serialize, and then we're gonna go to our text writer, and specifically what we're storing, which is going to be the Bowser object. And then what I'm gonna do is go in and just like I did before, I am going to nullify Bowser because we have that information saved and we don't need to close the stream because that's the reason why we used uh, using in that situation. So now what I wanna do is deserialize from XML to our object. And to do that, we're gonna go XML serializer once again, and I'm gonna call this a D serializer like that, and new XML serializer. And once again, we have to say type of, and whoops, type of, and this is going to be an animal. Then I'm going to use a text reader. So I'm gonna say text reader, and let's just call this reader is equal to new stream reader like that and then we're going to pass in the file we want to work with which is going to be this guy up here so let's just paste that right there close that off and then i'm just going to use a basic object let's just call this obj and call our deserializer once again and more specific deserialize and we will pass our reader inside of there now what we can do is go and assign that information back to bowser just by saying that it is not a regular object, it is an animal object. So we cast that. And in this situation, we wanna make sure that we close our reader so that we'll be able to access this information again. And if we wanna come in here, remember we changed the, what was it, the height or the weight, the weight of Bowser to 50 there just to show that something different happens. And we can then go in and go Bowser to string like that save it and run it and you can see right there we went in and we were able to save that okay so cool stuff and also you can see if we investigate the xml file that bowser's data is stored inside of there and there is the exact way that the xml data looks all right so we got all that set up now what we're going to do is we're going to show how to go and save a collection of animals so we're gonna create a list once again, and it is going to be an animal list that I'm gonna call the animals. And we can come in and go new list animal, and then we'll define a whole bunch of different animals in here. Let's throw that semicolon there so I don't forget it. So I'm gonna go new animal, and let's call this animal Mario, and give him a top, uppercase letter. And we'll throw 60 and 30 inside of there. And then we'll create a couple more of these animals and save them in our list. So like that. And we could also do Luigi. And let's have him be 55 and 24. 
And then finally, let's see if you can take a wild guess. No, not Toad Peach. All right, and this is gonna be 40, and we'll change this to 20 and get rid of that. All right, so we have our list of animals. We're going to save those as XML. Once again, we're gonna be using stream, file stream is equal to new file stream. And we're gonna save it in the same general place that we saved our other XML files. So let's go throw that in there like that. And let's call this animals instead. Now inside of here, we're gonna call XML serializer because I like it. And there it is, XML serializable or serializer. And let's call this serializer two is equal to new xml serializer and then we just need to define the type of you know data again well this time it's going to be a list all right so it's not that hard list of animals so there we go we have that inside of there and then after that we need to go serializer to and serialize and then we're just going to pass in our file stream and the animals which is the list that we are going to be converting into XML. Now we can come in again and go the animals and nullify that data. And then we can come in and we can read data from that XML file. Well, let's jump over and look at the XML just so we can see what it looks like. And there you can see, there's all of it. So there's Mario 60, da, 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 da. So you can see that it created all that XML, all right? So now we're gonna jump in and pull it back out. So we will go XML serializer, and I think I need to call this serializer three, I think that's what I'm up to, is equal to new XML serializer and type of, and this is going to be a list, and this is going to be an animal list. Let's throw that there. Now I'm gonna go using the file stream, and I'll call this file stream two equal to and we'll call file and we need to open and read data out of it and we're going to need to get our file did i save the file there it is and we just need to change this to animals instead of bowser and there's this and then inside of here we'll go the animals is equal to and we need to cast it to a animal list and then we go serializer three and deserialize so there's that and then we'll go fs2 which is what we're working with here our file stream the second one and that's it do that and now we can come in and look to make sure that everything is the same so we will go animal a in animal list or the yeah i want to do the animals that works and then we can go and we can print this out so we'll go a to string and we got that set up and everything looks good. Let's run it. Oh, there was an error. What was the error? File stream does not contain a constructor that takes one arguments. And where was that error at? That was on line 63. So where is line 63 and what did I do wrong? Oh yes, I forgot to put in some additional information. So let's just come in here. And I also need to come in and do file mode and define that I want to create this. I also want to be able to come in and write to the file. And then I do not want to file share. All right, have that saved. Don't see any errors, got that fixed. Let's run it, da, da, da. and there you can see. Mario weighs 60 pounds, 30 inches tall, 55 pounds, 24 inches tall, and Peach is 40 pounds and 20 inches tall. All right, so there is a whole bunch of information about serialization with C Sharp. Hope you guys found that useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.